Okay, um, I'm going to use this tutorial to uh, show you some other ways of working with uh, buffers and samples um, and also uh, eventually, hopefully, to uh, go over a few things that will allow you to uh, implement some kind of fairly basic polyphony. Uh, this is only one method, we'll look at another one later on. Um, this is a kind of uh, kludge polyphony i.e. to let you play more than one sound at once. Um, and this will be a, this will be a, a, well, first of all we're going to make a kind of drum sampler. Um, so we, we've made in the past a means of um, uh, getting one sample to play back at a variety of different pitches when you um, play them on a keyboard. This time we're going to get different keys on a keyboard to play different samples, that's the first thing. And then secondly I want to um, show you something which I've made, uh, well, uh, called Clatter. Um, and we will be modifying the original sample sampler to uh, give you a kind of, uh, well, to, to, to do what Clatter does. Um, that's a bit enigmatic, but I'll, I'll explain more when we get there. And then, as I say, we'll look at some some kind of um, uh, polyphony. So, um, <coughs> first of all, I'm going to start by making some buffers, because we need some buffers to hold the samples that we're going to be able to play with the different keys. So, um, let's start by making a buffer, and obviously giving it a name. So we'll call it Sound 1. Now, um, what I want to be able to do is to load the sampler sample into the patch as soon as the patch loads. Now I could do this um, by simply, uh, if I had a load bang message, um, I could send a replace message with the name of the file that I want to um, to store in, you know, in in buffer from from the outset. Um, but there is an easier way than that. Uh, maybe I should just complete that one just to show you exactly how I'd do it. What I would need to do is to have the patch saved in the same place as the buffers, uh, sorry, as the sounds that I want to load, or at least it's easiest if I do that. So I'm going to save this to somewhere I have previously stored some samples, and these samples are going to be percussion samples. So I need to go to here, and to here, and to there. And you can see I've got them in there. So I've got 24 percussion samples in there. Um, and I will call this uh, percussion sample. Um, so what I do is to um, connect those and put in uh, perk1. I think it was an if or whatever, whatever the name of the file is, and then when the when the patch loads, then it will send that message into the buffer and load that um, sound. But again, there is an easier way of doing it than that. I can do that by putting in um, the name of the sound that I want to load, which in fact is wav. I've just figured out. Um, then, uh, because we don't know the the duration of the file, I'm going to put in minus one. And buffer recognises that as being, uh, basically makes the buffer as big as the sound itself. It's basically like putting a replace message in. And then we'll put in the number of channels we want. So I put in that, and um, I double click on here. We've got both channels, and it's already loaded the file for us. So that makes life a great deal easier. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, inc I'm going to add the remaining um, sounds under different buffers. So... There we have uh, 24 uh, buffers, all named differently, sound 1 sound to sound 24, and uh, they um, reference the files that I've currently got in, my, in that folder, percussion 1 to percussion 0 to 4. And you'll notice if I double click on them, they've all got those percussion instruments in there. Um, just to uh, show you what they sound like, uh, except that I've just gone and closed the file, oh, here we are. Um, we have Okay, 
so they're not in appropriate order, but I don't care. Uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So, um, we want to be able to play them or reference them by means of a keyboard. Well, first of all, we'll figure out how to, to get them to play. Well, we know um, if I uh, use a groove, oops, groove object, um, and I'll, for now, I'll just reference sound one, but obviously we'll change that in a minute. Um, and I'll need two channels for that. And you could send this through gain uh, objects, um, you know, gain uh, sliders to um, get an appropriate level, but I'm just going to send them directly to um, an easy DAC. So we do that. Um, and then we obviously want to make sure that it plays back at an appropriate pitch, so I'll uh, put in SIG1 for all of that. Excuse the buzz of my phone. Send that to Groove. So we can, oh, you go, it just played it. Um, <clears throat> and then what we want to do is to tell Groove to reference one of those uh, those buffers and play it. And really, what we want, really, if as soon as we play the key, we want it to um, play the appropriate sound, uh, you know, as, as, as we play it. So we want it to, to find it and play it in one movement, as it were. But Groove really needs a kind of a, a pool of, uh, of names of the buffers in order to uh, reference them. And or well, we're going to make that pool in a call object. So um, we'll make a call object. And the first thing I'm going to do, because otherwise I'll forget, is to go into the inspector window and get it to save data with the patcher. And I'll go into call. And I'm going to give uh, an index for each of those sounds. So we'll give one to sound one. 2 to sound 2, 3 to sound 3, and I'm going to do another, um, I'll, I'll complete these and come back to you. There, so there they all are. Um, and so we've got a call containing all the relevant sound uh, or names of the buffers. So I'll close that and save it. And that means oops, that if I run that through a um, a message box with set dollar one in it and um, append a zero to that what should happen is that when I send a number into call it will refer to whichever sound I have given at each particular index, run through set and then send that, uh, the, you know, whichever one it's sent, so sound one, sound two, sound three, whatever. And then immediately after that, because of the comma and zero, which is a new message, it will play that sample from millisecond zero. So let's see whether that's worked. There you go. We could actually do this 